But we want to turn to the larger question about what's been going on with President Donald Trump and his civil fraud case in New York. Trump, as we told you, is facing a $464 million judgment against him. It's due tomorrow. It doesn't come up with that money. The New York Attorney General can begin seizing assets from Trump. The former president says he has the cash. That he's going to appeal the judgment, but his lawyer has been asking for a reduction in bond. We want to welcome in Michelle Thomas. She is a D.C. trial attorney, and we thank you for being with us this morning. Look, Michelle, half a billion dollars sounds like a lot of money to some of us. Okay? It sure does. Um, we've heard, though, two different stories here. Trump says he has the cash on hand on his social media points. However, his attorneys are saying, well, judge, maybe hold off on this. So which one should we believe? Oh, I'm going with the attorneys, and thanks so much for having yeah. me. It's really not a good day when you're boasting about how much money you have after you've been found to have committed fraud in terms of exaggerating the value of it, your assets, mm -hmm. and then you have your lawyers saying, no, that's not exactly true. It doesn't make sense for Trump to be boasting about the money because that means Letitia James is going to seize, try to seize those money. So let's put you, whether you want to or not, let's put you on the Trump defense team right now, okay? <laughs> So you have this client who's out there saying these things. How do you deal with that? Because as you just point out, the case is exactly about overvaluating assets. Yeah. So could this put you in a worse position than you already were, which wasn't good to begin with? Absolutely. It absolutely compromises Trump's case and position in trying to get the appellate court to intervene to what we call stay the collection or enforcement of the judgment. So that basically means Trump's asking the appellate court to intervene and say that he doesn't have to pay the bond, um, all 454 million of it today. But when he's going around boasting, saying that he has the money, that completely undermines his position. If the bond doesn't get posted, what happens? Letitia James, the attorney general, is going to move to seize his assets. Now, it's complicated legally because most of his assets are not in his individual name, mm -hmm. right? So the buildings and real estate that he owns, a lot of that is in the names of the companies. So there's some unraveling there. But she's going to seek to freeze his, any accounts that are in his name, possibly collect rent from the tenants that are in the buildings until the buildings are sold or liquidated. Mm -hmm. So she's going to take actions pretty immediately. But even that, doesn't that become a complication? Because even though we know it's about a half billion dollars mm -hmm. that he wanted, if the actual value of these properties is in question, how do you know that what you're seizing is going to equal that amount? Right. And so we can, she can look to sort of calculate it, for example, if she collects rent mm -hmm. from the tenants that are in the buildings. That's quantifiable. You know how much you're receiving in rent. Mm -hmm. When the buildings are actually sold, which is what she'll likely request to occur for some of the companies, you'll know exactly how much you receive. And that's, quite frankly, what the value will be of those buildings. How probable is it that all of those seizures and all of that could be put on hold as this appellate process plays out? So that's the problem, is that she's go there's going to be delays. There's going to be roadblocks thrown in, both through by the appellate process, but also by... Trump's team is going to file motion after motion trying to stay and, and delay these proceedings. So we're not looking at a quick process here, a, a quick enforcement process here, but she's going to take actions to start that process immediately. And meanwhile, we're getting this news now that the Republican National Committee has been able to contribute to the Trump attorney uh, fee situation. So is that legal? So what's happened, I'm glad you brought that up. So the RNC is not contributing directly mm -hmm. to the Trump legal fees. What they're doing is contributing to a PAC, a political action committee that Trump has formed that is then paying his fees. And so they just recently reached an agreement where the monies that are donated to, to the RNC are actually first going to Trump's PAC his campaign, and a portion of those monies are paying his legal fees. So that's it's sort of an indirect okay. payment. You almost need a chalkboard to follow you all this. You absolutely do. Uh, Michelle Thomas, we thank you so much. D.C. trial attorney and legal analyst joining us live mm -hmm. on the Hill of this morning. When we can